I am never going to be able to listen to this song again. <laughs> never. What is up, YouTube? It's RS Mario here, and I got on the Hawaiian shirt, so you know what time it is. It's time for an anime review. And I have to tell you, this one is probably anime of the year. All right, Netflix, they, they got another freaking Devil Man Crybaby level banger. Or do they? All right, so of course, uh, we're gonna be talking about Cyberpunk Edge Runners today. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to continue getting videos like this from me, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, do all that stuff that YouTube requires you to do, and continue getting videos from me, as well as follow me at twitter.com slash rsmario. Uh, like, this, like my video tweet, I will shout you out at the end of the episode, as well as uh, um, drop a comment down below to help the channel grow, especially since this is an anime video and YouTube really does not like my anime videos, so... You know, I, I'm gonna need y'all help on in that comment section. So let's talk about Cyberpunk Edge Runners. So of course, Cyberpunk Edge Runners follows the story of David Hernandez. He's a, a young man trying to uh, find his way in Night City, and his mom, I believe her name is Gloria. <laughs> she's in the sh she she's out of the show so quickly. I I barely can remember her name. Uh, but she is of course working as a uh, EMT. You know, in Night City, which that's got to be a whole full-time job with as many people to die in Night City. But she's working as an EMT, and on the low, she is selling uh, military-grade uh, cyberware that she, you know, basically gets out of the people who are already dead. And uh, she's doing this in order to keep David Hernandez in this, like, high-end Arasaka prep school that he's in to give him the best possible shot at not being... Uh, you know, a, a, a lame <laughs> in Night City. Uh, of course, uh, through a series of events, that doesn't happen, and David Hernandez ends up becoming a edge runner. Uh, an edge runner is basically kind of like a gangster in Night City. You're, you're basically doing jobs to make money, and these jobs usually involve stealing and or murdering people. <laughs> but, but it's Night City. It, that's kind of the way it goes. Um... And eventually he ends up getting caught up in a, a, in a group of edge runners led by a man named Maine. And this is where the story gets interesting. So we get characters like Maine, who is essentially your big Barrett, you know what I'm saying, from Final Fantasy VII like character. You know, then we get um, Dorio, who is essentially Zarya from Overwatch. If she was like in Cyberpunk, essentially she is Zarya. Essentially. Big. You know, she's not Russian, but she's a big brawly lady. You know what I'm saying? And she really likes her some 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 main. <laughs> uh, the other characters uh, are Rebecca, the guy with the hands, who I can't remember his name. And then of course we have Lucy, the eventual love interest. And this is the setup for our story in Night City. And like any story in Night City, it, it's actually pretty interesting until the bloody end because <laughs> the only good the only the only happy ending you're getting in night city is the happy ending that you get in vr simple as that another one of the good things about this show is just david hernandez himself like one thing one weakness i would have i would say that cyberpunk has overall uh is, is main characters like v is an interesting main character you know but v is supposed to be you so v doesn't have a great deal of personality and, you know, Johnny Silverhand has the personality of a really cool, uh, you know, uh, anarchist rock star who is kind of a dick. So take that what you will, but David Hernandez is like the perfect character for this. And it's not like, oh, you know, brown character is perfect because brown. He is perfect because he is this underdog character that knows that he is not going to go very far in Night City. So he does everything possible so that everybody around him can try to get to their dreams, even if he never gets to his. And that makes all of his W's that much bigger, but it also makes the crushing realization that this city is going to devour him that much worse. But it's all still pretty good to watch though. 
specifically those visuals. Rebecca makes the biggest character turnaround in this show, like like literally. Because when I before I watched the show, I had heard about everybody liking Rebecca and that Rebecca was waifu. And I was like, okay, y'all on y'all lowly stuff again. Okay, I see where y'all at. But I watched the show and I'm like, okay, she's low-key kind of annoying. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like in the beginning, <clears throat> she's low-key kind of annoying. But then as the show goes on and the show gets darker and darker and more and more of David's friends start to die, she becomes the glue that tries to hold this ramshackle group together. And she becomes one of the best characters in the show. I, I, it's like, bro, like she literally is one of the best characters in the show. The edgy Lolly is one of the best characters in this show. That's how you know that Trigger meant business when they was writing this show. You know what I'm saying? This had to be one of their favorite characters. You know what I'm saying? Rumor is they had to kind of fight to keep the Lolly in because, you know, lollies are not a part of the whole cyberpunk aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad they, if, if that's true, I'm glad they kept her in. So Trigger really goes over the top with this show. All right, one of the best things about this show is the visuals. And this is the first time I can think of a Western project where Trigger shines the most. Like Trigger did the Star Wars thing and it was good, but it didn't exactly feel like Star Wars because Trigger just went like over the top with it. And again, it wasn't bad. It just didn't feel like Star Wars, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like how, you know, some of the modern Star Wars movies don't feel like Star Wars. You know, just not in a bad way like those did. Now, the thing here is, um, this definitely felt like Cyberpunk. This felt like the quintessential Cyberpunk. This is the perfect adaptation. All right, because the over-the-top nature of, like, anything Trigger just works perfectly for this show. Like, over-the-top visuals, the, the freaking, the, those, like, uh neon colors that they've been using since Promare, like all that stuff, even like the over the top content, like the language, the violence and the horny, all of that stuff works so perfectly for this show. And speaking of the horn, like you think that like kill a kill was bad, bro. All right. Trigger with a Netflix deal. They is like, let's go with the horny. Okay. <laughs> Straight up. If there's anything bad I have to say about this show, it's only really two things. One is the pacing. The pacing in the beginning is a little bit everywhere. And that's because I, I think this is a symptom of being on a streaming service like Netflix. They only get 10 episodes. All right. So I'm like, that, that. usually like the baseline for an anime is 12, you know, 12, 16, 24, or either you're going into like, you know, long running shonen territory after that. You know what I'm saying? But usually you get 12. They only got 10. So the beginning and the setup for the world and the setup for the characters is a bit quick. Like we go from, hey, look, it's David and his mom to, oh my God, people are dying. <laughs> Just like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, okay, we're, we're, we're going right into this. We're going to this raw, cuz. And, um,. It makes the setup a little bit jarring and it, it, it but it works though like it's, it's not like I missed anything like there wasn't any characters that just got glossed over other than his mom you know what I'm saying but yeah you know that's the only that's one of the bad things I could say about it the other bad thing I could say about this show is definitely the plot like they lift plot points directly from Johnny Hill Johnny Silverhand story and from V's story in 2077. Like, I mean, you got like the edge runner that's going against the world. You know what I'm saying? You got uh, his his girlfriend that has connections to Arasaka that he's eventually gonna have to try to save. You have a run on Arasaka Tower. You have a fight with, with, uh, with, with, with Adam Smasher. Like all of this is pretty much Johnny Silverhand the story without the dickish anarchy. You know what I'm saying? That's essentially what it is. <laughs> I mean, in, in some ways. I mean, in some ways it's better than Johnny's story because, you know, like, you, you kind of get to know his whole group. Whereas in the little bit of Johnny's story that we get in 2077, you don't really get to know, 
like, you know, Alt Cunningham and the rest of Johnny's group. Whereas David's group, you get to know them. Um, like, they even lift, uh, 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 they lift a plot point from V's story, you know what I'm saying, with, uh, specifically with who the villain is in the story. And you, you'll know, like, once you figure out this character is Juan Carlo Esposito, you're gonna know who the villain is in the story. Alright, and they lift that plot point directly from V's story in the game. Uh, which, by the way, you don't have to play the game to watch the show, you know what I'm saying? But it would probably help if you know about the world. Like, they set up the world for the most part, but it would help if you know about the world and some of the terms, like if you know what Choon means, or Prem, or Dunk, all this other kind of stuff that they say mean. But overall, I have to say, like, this is another Devil Man Crybaby level banger for Netflix. And I have to say, Cyberpunk Edge Runners gets an A. All right, if you can stomach the violence and the sex and how the show eventually culminates in darkness, you will love Cyberpunk Edge Runners. All right, um,. But yeah, so that's about it for this, of course. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, do all that stuff that YouTube requires you to do to continue getting videos from me, as well as follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash rsmario. Drop a comment down below to help this video not get buried by the algorithm. And as always, people, keep it real.